Arduitz mentioned before the Rushalmi in Maseches Yume that says, Kol Dor Shaloi Nivno Beis Amikdosh Biyomov. Any generation that the temple wasn't built in their days, Ki Ilu Nichav Biyomov. So we relate it as if that was destroyed in that generation. And the reason is that Hashem expects from any generation after the destruction to learn and to understand what were the reasons that because of that the temple was destroyed and to correct those things that were wrong. And if they would do it and they would correct those things, the temple would have been built in that, that generation. So it teaches us that really the generations after each generation has a power in their hands to build the temple again. Because if they learn and understand the reasons and correct it, could have been built. And that's the reason why we related it that the destruction was in their generation, Kiru Nechav Biyomov, because they had the power in the end that they could have built it back if they would correct those reasons. So I would like to focus on one of the first reasons that says in the Novi, and in the Gemara, what was the reason for the Churban Bais Rishon, the destruction of the first temple? It says in the Pasuk in the Novi, in Yirmiyo, Mi Aisha Chochom V'yoven Ezois. Who is the smart person that could understand what was the reason that the temple was destroyed? Rasher Pi Hashem Diber Eilov. And who is the person that God spoke to him? Maybe he could tell us. And if he the gears of the Bach, this question was answered, was, was asked also to the angels and they couldn't answer. And there's a different Chazal that say on this, Dovor ze Nishal, this question, why the first temple was destroyed, Dovor ze Nishal Echachomim, they asked it to the smart people of that generation, Veloi Pirshu, they couldn't answer. Dovor ze Nishal Lanevin was asked, to the prophets of that generation, Veloi Pirshu, and they couldn't answer. With Dovor Zeh Nishal and Malochi Ashores, the Fidigils of the Bach, even to the angels, they tried to ask this question, Veloi Pirshu. Ad she Pirsha Kadosh Bochu Ba'atzmai. And this question, God himself answered this question because nobody else was able to answer this question. And what does it say in the Pasuk? Vayoy Mer Hashem. And God said, because they left the Torah that I gave in front of them. So normally, if somebody would learn this Pasuk without the explanation of Chazal, when you see these words, we would understand that they left the Torah, that the Jews in that generation stopped learning. And that was the reason for the destruction of the Bais Rishon. But the Ran says in the Dorim that that can't be. Because we all know, and there's a lot of sources for it, that the protection of the Jewish nation is only when there are Jews that are sitting in living Torah. But if the situation would be, and the case would be, that they left the Torah, it wouldn't be such a hard question to answer. And the Nevi'im would know, the Chachamim would know, the angels would know, everybody would answer, and they would know to put the point over here. It's because they stopped learning. So that wasn't the case. The Jews in that generation of Bais Rishon, the first temple, continued to learn. But even though they were guilty and there was a claim on them that they were doing it not in the right way. And the question is, what was the problem? So the Gemara in the Dorim and in Bob Metzir, the Gemara comes to a conclusion that the problem was We know that we have a commandment, there's an argument if it's Midoraisa, Midorabonon, but we have a commandment every day in the morning, in the blessings, we say the blessing on the Torah. And the problem in that generation was that they did not bless those blessings on the Torah. 
And the Ram comes and explains what was really the reason that they didn't bless those blessings on the Torah. So the Ram says that the problem was that they didn't respect enough the Torah and to understand that it reserves a blessing before that. And therefore, they stopped saying the blessing, which we have to say every morning when we start the day and the blessings of the morning, the Birka Satoru. Now, there's a couple of questions on this to understand this idea. What was the problem really, Shalei Birchu, Batoru, that they didn't bless the blessing of the Torah, what's supposed to be done before a person learns? And I'll start with the question the Maharal and the Talmud of the Goeniesk. They say there's a lot of Rishonim that hold, early commentaries that hold, that Birka Satera is a mitzvah midoraisa. It's a commandment midoraisa. It's not a din de Rabbonon or a <coughs> mitzvah that they said you have to. It's a mitzvah midoraisa. That everybody has to make a blessing on the Torah in the morning. And really, it's a right advice that a person should think before he says the Birka Satera that to be Yoitze those Rishonim that it's a mitzvah sese doraise. The Mishnah Bura says that in a mitzvah doraise, there's a lot of mitzvah tziras kavana. You have to have an intention to know that I'm going to do now a commandment that says in the Torah. So the Maharal asks a question, how could it be that because they did not respect enough the Torah, so therefore they erased that commandment? They canceled that mitzvah? He says, we see, there's a lot of Gemaras, we bring one of them. The Gemara in Baruch says that there are things that are very important. Kirum Zulus Livnei Adon. There are things that are Ha'oimdim Berum Shalom. They're very, very important mitzvahs. But Bnei Adon Mezalzerim Bahim. People don't respect it enough. Did we see in any place that they canceled the mitzvah from the Torah? That they erased it? They always, a people, <coughs> They do it in a better way, do it in a less way. But this is an unclad Israel on the Jewish nation of that time. They stopped. How could we accept that if there's a commandment in the Torah to do it, no matter how much you understand it, no matter how much feeling you have for it, but we didn't find in any different mitzvah in the Torah that they canceled or they erased that mitzvah. So what happened over here? How could it be <clears throat> that there was a claim on the whole Jewish nation in that time that they stopped the blessing of Birka Satera. The Maran himself says that he wanted to suggest that maybe because this question so much bothered him, he said maybe they really went through the motion of saying the blessing of Birka Satera. They said it, because it can't be. They just canceled, they just ripped out one page out of the Siddur, and they said, okay, this is not for us, and we're not doing the blessing. Even though they were learning, they were learning Torah, but they didn't do Shalei Bircho Batero Trilo. So Maran says, maybe, could be, that they did do it, but they didn't do it in the right level of Ava Sashem that you're supposed to have <clears throat> when a person blesses Birka Satero. And he goes on through a whole Arichus that Anybody that understands the quality of the Torah, the power of the Torah, has to have a special Ava Hashem to love God that He gave us such a present. And it's supposed to be in a very, very high level, more than different blessing. And that was the claim on Klal Yisrael that they said Birkas Torah, but they didn't say it in the right level of Ava Hashem, of loving God that's supposed to come together with saying the Birka Zatera. But it's very hard to accept the answer of the Maharal. He himself feels that it's a hard answer because that the Pashtas of the Gemara, the Loshan of the Gemara, the language of the Gemara is It's very hard to accept that they made a bracha, but they didn't make it in the right level of Avas Hashem. So for sure, we could take out from this Maharal what Avas Hashem we need in the Birka Zatera of Every day that we say in the morning, 
<clears throat> but I would like to suggest a different answer on this question of the Maral, and we could take a message from this answer for the way we have to say the blessing on the Torah every day. And we'll start as an introduction. The two in Siman Menzayin, when he brings the law, the halacha of Birkas HaTorah, the two says, we all know that there's three parts in Birkas HaTorah that we say every day. The first part, Asher Kiddishonu B'Mitzvah Yisov, that's the blessing that we say on every mitzvah. So also over here we're saying, Asher Kiddishonu B'Mitzvah Yisov, V'Tzivanu, Lasek B'Divah Torah, that God <coughs> gave us this mitzvah, it's a mitzvah, like every different mitzvah. The Salmu Torah Keneged Kulam, it's a higher mitzvah, but it's a mitzvah like any mitzvah. And that's why we say the same bochot that we say in every mitzvah. Then we ask from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we ask from God, We're asking a special request that the Torah that we learn should be sweet for us. And then there's a third bochot, Asher bochar bonu mikol amin that HaKadosh Baruch Hu <coughs> chose us out of all the nations, and he gave us his Torah. When the two brings the brachas of Birkas HaTorah, he says like this, a person has to say every morning a blessing on the Torah. And he quotes the two first brachas that he has to say. And then he says, and there is another bracha <coughs> you're supposed to bless when you say the Birka Sater in the morning. So the Bach on the place asks a very interesting question on these words of the two. We know that every word in the two is measured and there's no extra words. So he said, if the reality is, whatever the source is, that these are the brachas that we have to say in the morning. Some sheet is all this, two brachas, it's three brachas. These are the brachas that you have to say on the Torah in the morning. The question is, so why doesn't the two write in a shorter way, you have to say two brachas and talk about two of those brachas. You have to say three brachas if Arev is another bracha. He writes, you have to say two brachas, but there is another bracha that you have to bless in the morning. It sounds like he's separating. You have to say this. The Bach takes out, out of those words, that it's two kinds of brachas. It's not the same. It's not similar. So he says that the first bracha, he learns that the two first brachas are one bracha. The first bracha is a normal bracha like we say in every mitzvah. <clears throat> we have a shoifel. We have a blessing before. We blow the shoifel. We take a lulav and sukkahs, we have a blessing before. So that's the first bracha. But the second bracha is a special bracha, what's called birka soidor. That's those are brachas that we thank Hashem and presence and special things that we feel that we got from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. <clears throat> So the second bracha is called birka soidor. That's why the two didn't say, you have to say two brachas, because it's not the same kind of brachas. It's two issues. One issue is to relate to learning Torah as a mitzvah, like all the other mitzvahs that we have. Then there's a second issue. It's a special present that we got from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we have to be thank him, we have to be thankful, we have to be, have a chorus atoyv on that special present that he gave us. He chose us from all the nation, and he gave us the Torah. So it's a different kind of bracha. <clears throat> but I would like to suggest another explanation in the two, and that will lead us to answer the question that we asked in the beginning. The Mechaber, Rabbi Yosef Kar on the Shulchan Aruch, Paskan Zaloche, that women have to bless Birka Satera. Noshim, it's a short, a short sime, a short seif in the Shulchan Aruch. Noshim mevochas birkas atera. Women have to bless birkas atera. And the question is, we all know that women are not committed in learning Torah. It's a pasuk in the Torah. Ve'limadte moisam es bneichem, es bneichem v'lo es bnei sechem. 
So they're not, they don't have that commandment of Talmud Torah. So how could it be that they could bless the blessing of Birkas HaTorah? Normally we would think, whoever's commanded in that mitzvah, they could bless. But if somebody is not commanded in the mitzvah, they can't make the blessing. So a lot of the commentaries on the Shulchan the Mogan of Rome and the place, says, what's the pshat in this Shulchan That women should say Birkas HaTorah if they're not commanded in Talmud Torah. So the Mogan of Rome brings a Bess Yosef that explains and says, that there are things, there are mitzvahs, there are commandments that woman, she has to do. The parents of his mitzvah says she has on Gomer. But there are commandments, the part of the Torah, that the women have to fulfill. How will she know how to fulfill it? She has to learn Torah. She has to learn Torah to know what she is supposed to fulfill. So for that reason, she has to learn. She has to say a blessing on Birkas Torah. Says also that part of the davening is psukim korbanos, so she anyways has to say those things, and that's Torah. So she has to make a blessing before. But the goin in the place disagrees with the Mogen Avram, and he says a very sharp, sharp expression. He said, "How could you, the Mogen Avram, use this as explanation?" when there's a pasuk in the Torah that says, not like you. There's a pasuk that's screaming, not like you. Says the God, and it could be, for sure. They have to learn, because they have to know what to do. But if you could plant a little disc in the mind of a woman and she'll know what to do, it'll be the same thing. She doesn't have to go through the motion of mitzvah Talmud Torah. She's not commanded to learn. It's a chetim, so it's the only way that she has a possibility to know what she's supposed to fulfill is to learn. <laughs> but it's not a mitzvah. So how could she say, Asher Kirishonu B'mitzvah so and bless as if she was commanded, but she's not commanded in her He says, the Pesach is saying, V'limadte moison es b'neichem v'lo es b'neiseichem. And the Goen Yefte says that maybe that Rishon that Paskin da'alocha that women have to say Birka Satoro, maybe he learns like the Rishonim. There's a big argument in the early commentaries in the Rishonim. All those mitzvahs that women are not commanded to do, could she bless on those mitzvahs or no? And part of the Rishonim, Tesis brings it in Gitin and Kiddushin, that they could make a blessing. Why? Because even though She's not commanded, but if she does it, she has a mitzvah. What's called in the Svar mitzvah kiyumit. There's a commandment that you have to do. There's a commandment you don't have to do, but if you did it, there is a mitzvah. And the blessing of the Birkas mitzvahs, the blessing that the mitzvahs require to bless before, could be made even on a commandment that you're not forced to do. It's only a commandment that if I did it, so it's, it's called that I did a mitzvah. That's what the Goen says. But it's famous that in the Shulchan Aruch, the question is still stayed the question. And you can't say like the Goen. Why? The same Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, that he paskins that women have to say Birka Satera. In Simen Yud Zayin, the Shulchan Aruch paskins that if a lady, a woman, did any kind of mitzvah, she should not bless a blessing. Because the Shulchan Paskins, like the other Rishonim, that no matter what, a lady doesn't say a blessing, women doesn't, don't say a blessing on Birkas and mitzvahs. Because if they're not commanded, you can't say. And Mele, Birkas and mitzvahs is only for somebody that's commanded to do the mitzvah. If you're not commanded, you don't say the mitzvah. So the Mechaber himself that said, that women should not bless Birkas mitzvahs. You can't explain it like the Goyen. So why did Mechaber Paskin La'aloche and say that women have to bless Birkas HaTeor? No Shem Evochos Birkas So there's a famous answer that the Briskarov said, and it's written in his book, Ma'on Levi, in the name of his father, Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim said, that the Birkas HaTorah 
is not Birkas HaMitzvahs. And especially the ones, the Rishonim, there are a lot of Rishonim that learn that it's a Mitzvah Eset, the Raisa, the Birkas HaTorah, the Ramban, the Rajbo, Meiri, Chinuch. You have a lot, a lot of Rishonim that holds a Mitzvah, the Raisa. From where do you know this Mitzvah? There's a Pasuk that the Gemara Brochus learns from, Ki Shem Hashem Ekro, Hovu Goydel Eloikeinu. What does the Pasuk mean? And the Gemara learns this Pasuk, Ki Shem Hashem Ekro. It means that when I'm learning Torah, Hovu Goydel Eloikeinu, that's the right time to bless a Kaddish Baruch Hu on the Torah that we're learning. The Marsha on the place has a question. Why is the Torah called over here Kishem Hashem Echo? Normally, without the explanation of Chazal, we would say that if somebody says the name of God, Kishem Hashem Echo, Havu Gadol Elkeinu. And there's a reason why we learned it on Torah. But the Marsha goes another step. Why is Torah called names of a Kodesh Baruch? Hu? So the Marsha explains, and he says that really, in Kabbalah, all, the whole Torah is called names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to show how holy the Torah is, how much Kedusha there is when a person learns Torah. <clears throat> That's why Torah is called over here, Kishem Hashem when I'm saying the name of God, because it's really presenting the holiness that's within the Torah. And that's what requires to say a bracha before. And I would like to take this idea and take it one more step. We all know there's a major difference between all the wisdoms in the world and the wisdom and the Chochmah of Torah. The Torah has a special power that if somebody learns in the right conditions, so then the, the Torah has a power to make a person more holy. The Torah has a power to make a person more pure. The Torah has a power to elevate a person even if he was in a low spiritual level to change his reality, to change the reality of his soul and to bring him up, to elevate him to a higher spiritual level. That's the reality of Torah. Torah has a holiness that comes together through the Ashras Ashkina that a person gets when he's learning. The Mishnah Novus says that even if one person is sitting and learning alone, there is Ashras Ashkina while he's learning. If a person observes that Ashras Ashkina that comes together with the learning, that changes the Metzias, that changes the reality of the person. That's really part of what we can understand. It says, there's 48 Kenyonim Shatero Niknes by him. And I remember one student came and asked me, he said, I don't understand what does this mean exactly, 48 Kenyonim Shatero Niknes by him. What's the difference between somebody that did those 48 Kenyonim and somebody that didn't do? They both learned. What does it mean, Kinyonim Shatera Niknes Ben? So one of the explanations is, there are, there are a couple of explanations, but one of them is, and I think that's the main one, that Torah a person can observe and cannot observe. The Ramchal says that if somebody could learn, sit and learn Torah, and really it could be like he's reading some kind of book, it does not affect him. If he doesn't do the right conditions that Chazal say, that are the right way to learn, he does not observe anything, he won't change, he'll be the same person that he was before. There's a Gemara in Megillah, that was one Amoira, that they came and asked him to be Masvid, <coughs> one of the people that were learning and were Nifta at that time. And he answered, that he can't be masked him. So they told him he learned a lot. He knew, he knew a lot, he knew Mishnayis, he knew Chumash, he learned a lot. But he told them that he didn't have the right 
level of understanding of what he learned. So he called him that he was like Tik Moles Vorim. And there's a Bali Musa, they say, that if a person doesn't act the right way, so you could call him Hamor Noises for him. Somebody he knows, he knows. But he did not learn Torah the right way and to use that power of the Torah that the Torah could elevate him to a different spiritual level, you have to have the right conditions. Ramchal speaks over there, what's the right conditions? You have to have Yiras Hashem, you have to have Simcha when you're learning. There are conditions. So we learn from this and we know that the Torah could change the soul of the person to make it more pure, to make it more holy, to clean the soul of a person from the stains of the sins that he did. The Torah has a special power. It says in Svarim that the Torah has a koyach of a kapora today that we don't have the korbanis to sacrifice in Beis Amikdosh. We could use the Torah, the Torah could clean a person and it gives a kapora to a person. The Torah has a tremendous power of a reality of holiness that if you, write, you learn in the right conditions, it changes the reality of the person. But that needs a gate, it needs an introduction, it needs a gdoma before you start learning the Torah. That's the pshat in the Gemara when the Gemara says, Ki shem Hashem hekro hovu goidel elokeinu. The Marsha says that the Gemara is using to express the holiness of the Torah, it's using Kishem Hashem Echo. Because we're talking over here, what is in the Torah that because of that, we have to say the blessing before? And this comes together with the idea of the Briskerov in, in the name of Reb Chaim. It's not like all the other Birkas and Mitzvahs that we have to say a blessing before we start the Mitzvah. That's the right way to do the Mitzvah. Over here, the holiness of the Torah, we have to have some kind of introduction before to prepare ourselves, to have the right key, to go through the right gate, and to have the right introduction before we learn. Because we have to know what we're dealing before we start. And like we said before, that it says, that there's 48 kinyonim shatur and niknes bem, that with that we could observe the holiness of the Torah. There's a very interesting medrash. The medrash says, it says 48 times in the Torah be'er. Be'er is a well, and it's 40 time, 48 times in the Torah. What does it come to tell us? The medrash says, it's keneged arboim v'shmoyne kinyonim shatur and niknes bem. These 48 times that says Be'er, it's against the 48 Kinyonim. What's the Pshat? Because that a Be'er is something that a person is supposed to dig and make a hole and detach himself to spring to fresh water. So for a person to observe the holiness of a Torah, he has to dig in himself. Be'erois. He has to dig himself that he could be somebody that could observe the holiness of the Torah. What's coming to tell us again that you have to have special things and special conditions to prepare yourself to observe that holiness. And without that preparation, he could be a person that learns, but the learning will not affect him and will not change him. You have to do the right conditions and the right introduction. And part of the right introduction is to know and to feel what you're dealing with, what you're dealing with, and to prepare yourself to absorb, to observe that holiness. So says Reb Chaim, even though that the Mechaber, Paskin Zalocha, that women, even if they do a commandment, they should not bless. Teisvis holds a lot of places in Shas that they could bless, like we mentioned before, 
because that even though they're not forced, they're not commanded, they don't have to do the mitzvah, but if they do the mitzvah, there is a reality of the mitzvah that, that she did and she get a reward in Olam Abba that she did as a Eino Mitzvah Vahoyse. But the Mechaber himself, Paskin Zalocha, the women do not bless any Birkas and Mitzvahs. If she blows Shoifer, if she'll take a Lulav, she should not bless Birkas and Mitzvahs. That's the Psak of the Mechaber. The Ramah Paskin is not like that. The Mechaber himself says that women should bless Birkas and Mitzvahs. So the explanation is why they have to bless this blessing of Birka Satera is because that the reality of Torah they have, and if they learn, even know that in terms of the laws of Birka and Mitzvahs, they don't say a bracha, but that's the right introduction before you learn. And if she learns, in his language in, in Hebrew, he says the Chefza of Torah needs Agdama, when somebody is dealing with the reality of Torah that it comes together with Ashra Sashrina, that comes together with the indwelling presence of God, and then makes impression on a person and leaves impression on a person. So the right way to learn, this is the gate, this is the key, this is the entrance. So also women have to do that. It's not connected to the Birkas and Mitzvahs, to what we see in all the places that that women does not have to do. But over here, this is the introduction before anybody that learns, because this is the way to get to learning to If not, you're learning something that won't have an effect in you. And also a woman can have an effect on her soul through learning Torah, but with the right introduction that the men have, that they say the Birkas Torah before. So if the, we have this answer of Reb Chaim, that he's coming to explain the Shulchan Aruch, why the same Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, that said that she does not have to say Birkas Amitzvah, anyways, he paskins that women have to say Birkas Atterah. I would like to use this idea to answer the question of the Maharal that we asked in the beginning. The Maharal asked the question how could it be that in the generation of the first temple, it says that the claim on them was they were guilty. They stopped saying the blessing on the Torah what we have to say every morning. How could that be? How could they? They came and they raised one commandment. We didn't find it in any different place, in any different mitzvah. And it doesn't matter how much they understand it, how much they respect it. And we found that there was things that they disrespect, but they didn't stop doing it. So how could it be over here because they, they did not understand it, it wasn't important enough in their eyes, and they didn't have enough of feeling it, so they stopped doing it. So really what could be suggested over here is that the Jews in that time, the mistake was that because the terror wasn't important enough in their eyes, they didn't have that concept that the Kedusha of the terror, the holiness of the terror, that forces us and makes us to have a special introduction before. That's what they didn't know. They said the bracha as birkas and mitzvahs. And really we know, like we bring from the Marsha, and like we bring from Reb Chaim, that there's a special law of Torah, that before you learn Torah, it has to have that introduction to observe that holiness to get that power that the Torah has, that the power could change the soul of a person, that can make him more holy, can make him more clean, can make him more pure. The Torah wasn't important enough for them to understand that there's a special book over here. Because this could be a mistake. A person can make a mistake and say, I have to say a book, but it's because of mitzvahs. I have to say a book, not because that the Torah has a special bracha that we have to say before. So that could be an answer on two of the questions that we mentioned. One question is, how could it be that they stop saying Birka Sadr? The answer is, and before we answer this, maybe we'll ask another question. There's a question in the Gemara, that some of the commentaries related. Why is it saying the Gemara, Shiloi Birchu Batoiro Trilo? Wouldn't it be more 
פשוט is to say שלא יבירכו ברכס התורה. Any place, there's a rule in all the Gemara, and you can check it, any place that Chazal could express itself in a more simply way, they would say it in that way. And if they didn't say it in that way, it comes to teach us something. So the question is supposed to be raised when you learn this Gemara, that the Gemara says, Omar Rav Yudah, Omar Rav, Shelo Yibirchu Batoir Otchilo. What would be more simple to understand? Shelo Yibirchu Berkas Atoir, that's the Pshat. Shelo Yibirchu Batoir Otchilo. But if we take this idea of Reb Chaim, so it's unbelievable to see how the words of the Gemara are exactly coming to say this idea. Shelo Yibirchu Batoir Otchilo. The Torah is something so important, so holy, so high, that that observes, that that needs a bracha before. We need a bracha before because of the holiness of the Torah. That's why it says, Shaloi birchu b'Torah trilo. That's coming to teach us, we're not talking stam about birkas and mitzvahs, that's in all the mitzvahs of the Torah, shoifah, lulav, sukkah. That's a birkas and mitzvahs. We're coming to say over here, that the claim on them was that the Torah wasn't important enough for them to understand this deepness that we're dealing with a special wisdom, with a special chachma, we're dealing with a special learning that makes a person more holy, that makes him more pure. That should lead us to understand that this is a special bracha. That should lead us to understand what's the right pshat in Kishem Hashem Hekro that we should learn the right pshat that it's not a normal birkas atayra. It's a special bracha that's a gate, an introduction before we sit and learn. So first of all, this could be an answer. We said, the tool says that we have to say a blessing on the Torah. There is another bracha that we say in birkas atayra. The Bach asked the question, what does it mean, Why to, to speak one and one, one plus one is two? I mean, they say in the beginning, there's two Bachas that you have to say in the Torah. So the answer is, the first Bach is Birkas HaMitzvah, but the second Bach is a special Bach, the two ones that divide, and to say it's two kinds, two issues, two sugiyas. There's one Bach of Birkas HaMitzvah, but there's another issue that Torah is something so holy that the only way to observe that holiness is with saying a bracha before. And it fits in very good with the words of the tool. The tool says over there something very interesting. That every morning when somebody says the blessing of Birkas Torah, he should think that this Torah was giving that in that time of Mahmoud al Sine, there was fire in that time. It was giving me Torah from the fire. Question is, what's the point? There were a lot of things that happened then in Mahmoud al Sinai. There was flowers, there's all kinds of things that happened then that we don't have to be mechaven when we say the blessing. But the Aish is something that shows the holiness of the Torah. And that's what we have to think. That's the right kavana, the right intention that we have to have when we say our blessing on Birkas Torah every morning. Number one, we have to have the intention that it could be we're fulfilling a mitzvah d'oraisa, commandment d'oraisa. Number two is to, when we say those words, asher bochar bonu mikol amim, did he choose us out of all the nations, v'nosan lanu es he gave us something holy that when we learn, we could observe that holiness and that could change our soul to be a different person. And that's the intention we have to have in the morning. That's why the tool says, V'yeish oid bracha acheres. There's another bracha. But it's not similar to the first bracha. The first bracha is because of mitzvahs. On shoifu we have one bracha. On lulav we have one bracha. On sukkah we have one bracha. What, what happened over here? That we have more. Because this is a different kind of bracha. This is a bracha that that's the right key, the right entrance, the right gate. To go through. This is the gate you have to go through before you learn. That's the right introduction. The first bracha is the bracha like every mitzvah. 
The second bracha is the right introduction we have to go through before we learn the Torah. Therefore, we can answer the question of the Maharal. The Maharal asked the question, how could it be that they erased that, that mitzvah, they stopped blessing the Torah because they didn't understand that the Torah is so important? How could it be that they stopped? The answer is they did not cancel a mitzvah. The Birkas, they said a bocha, but they thought the same Birkas and mitzvahs. They didn't put enough attention, they didn't have enough of understanding that we're talking about something so spiritual, so high. And since holiness that the Torah has, that that's a special bocha. And that answers the question of the tool, the question of the ma'aral. It explains the language of the Gemara. Why doesn't it say more simply? What is it? And with this, with this answer, I would like also to answer a very interesting question in Rashi. Rashi brings this Gemara in Bab Metzia also. The, in the Gemara, it's brought twice. It's brought in Edorim and it's brought in Bab Metzia. The lotion of the Gemara is Shalei Birchu Bater Otchilo. Rashi comes and says, which bocha they didn't bless? Rashi says, Asher bochar bonu. And I heard from a big Talmud Chochem, Rav Kulitz, who's a Av based in Yerushalayim, he said he doesn't understand this Rashi. Where did Rashi take this remez? Shalei birchu batero. Whatever the bocha is, they want mevorech. Rashi says two things, very interesting. They did not bless the blessing of Asher bochar bonu, number one. And then he says, and you know from where the Gemara took that that was the problem? Because we have a new way how to learn the Pasuk. Normally we would translate, they left the Torah, as we said in the beginning, that I gave in front of them. But says Rashi, no, the Chazal learned this Pasuk a different way. I, they left the Torah that I gave, when lifneim, we stop the pasuk. Al ozom esterosi yashar nosati. Point lifneim. They did something before the learning that that was considered that they left the Torah. Vehi alifoneo shelif lifnei div Torah. That's what Rashi says. Rashi says this broche is what we have to do before we're learning. What's the whole arichus and Rashi, and what is? from where Rashi take that this bracha they didn't say. What we said before, it's very clear. Because that Rashi learned that the first two brachas of Birka Satera are not connected to the holiness, special holiness that Tera has, and that introduction that we have to do to observe that holiness of Tera. It's Birka Samitzvah. That it could be they said. That answers the question of the Maharal. How can it be that they erased the commandment from the Torah? It's not that they erased it. They didn't interpret it in the right way. They didn't focus in the right way. They did it, but they did it as birkas and mitzvahs. They said uh, some kind of bocha, but it was birkas and mitzvahs. That's why the Gemara doesn't say, Then we would miss the point. We would explain maybe they didn't say those bochas b'chlal. Means they didn't say that bracha that the Torah commands us to do before the Torah because that's the entrance to the Torah. Therefore, that's the explanation in Rashi. What Rashi says, Asher bochar bonu, that's the bracha they didn't make because they did the other brachas. And that's the answer of the Maharal. They didn't erase, they didn't rip, rip out of the Siddha <coughs> that page that says Birkas Torah and they didn't <coughs> relate it. They had a mistake, that was the claim on them. And in that generation, their high level, their high spiritual level, so we could have understanding that they should understand that, that when you're dealing with a terror, you're dealing with a different kind of wisdom. You're dealing with something that could change a reality of the person. Therefore, that's what Rashi says, the bocha that they didn't do was Asher bocha bonu, the different bochas that could be they made. And that's the explanation, the language also of the Gemara. So we'll end with a prayer 
that we should be zoiche even in this year, the Kabel Pnei Mashiach Tzidkenu B'Mehero, and we should all be zoiche every day in the Birkas Atera, the blessing of Birkas Atera, that we pray every day to have the right intention to think two things. One, that we're doing the commandment, that it could be it's a commandment, and this is the right key, the right gate, and the right introduction to getting and gaining the special power that the Torah could give to a person if you do it in the right conditions.